don't get prosecuted. I mean, the fact that, I mean, Donald Trump has shown us actually a flaw, uh, a significant flaw in our, our, yeah. our constitutional system of checks and balances. This is not the way America is supposed to run. And in a way, it's not just the Attorney General who's doing the same thing with the Fed board at the moment, right? Another area that was meant to be depoliticized that has a huge amount of influence on America and American people's lives and the economy, and he's politicizing that as well too. So I think there does need to be a discussion about what is the best way to protect certain positions from the prospect of politicization if you have a president who is prepared to shed norms and customs mm -hmm. and go that way, and Attorney General, uh, Bill Barr auditioned for that job in the memo that he sent to the White House last summer. He got the job with the specific aim of putting the best possible spin on the Mueller report, whether it was in the summary or whether it's in this non-press conference conference that we're going to have this morning at 9.30 this morning. That is why he's there. That is why he was chosen by the White House, to take this report that is potentially problematic to the president and spin it in the best possible light. That's what he did in the summary, and we assume that's what he's going to do in the Mm. Conference that is not we'll really see. a press conference. And we'll I, mean, I don't see. know why we're calling a press no. conference because people haven't seen the material. Right, and and Willie, really like so many other things uh, that have happened in Washington D.C. that, again, are breaches of constitutional norms. Uh, it, it's, uh, the Republican senators own Attorney General Barr. Yeah, the the Republican senators who uh, select voted for him uh, are the ones that put that gave Donald Trump his Roy Cohn in one of the most uh, critical positions in our government. William Barr is behaving in all the ways that people who are worried about his nomination and his potential to be the attorney general, he's doing all of the things they worried about, which is protecting first and foremost the president. Julia Ainsley, what is the rationale here from the Justice Department as you talk to your sources over there for the 930 press conference? Other than the obvious that we've been talking about today, which is to set the narrative for President Trump before anyone can read it, get their hands on it or ask questions about it. How are they defending having it not at, say, 3.30 rather than 9.30? There is no rationale, Willie. I mean, I think Caddy's absolutely right. We should be asking why they are having this press conference. And we should think that today. Why would you have a press conference at 9.30 before reporters even have a chance to read the report to ask questions? That was something we were pressing them on yesterday before we got this 11 a.m. timetable of will we have it, will we not? And no one could say whether or not we would have it. To me, it seems, you know, fairly obvious that they want to spin it before we read it. But another thing I would be looking for is whether or not William Barr brings up this issue of spying again. We know from his testimony mm. last mm. week that he's interested in reviewing a part uh, independently from the inspector general investigation of the origins of this investigation. So if he brings that up today, whether it's in a question from the audience or whether he makes that one of the central points of his press conference, that is a very deliberate conflation of that that story, that narrative that's been pushed by Republicans and what's at the heart of this Mueller investigation. And we've already heard from William Barr so many times in both of those congressional testimonies and in the letters that he's released. I don't understand why we need more Barr today instead of more Mueller. And that's something that we've been pressing officials on at the Justice Department. But all they can say is, is buckle up and get ready for the day. So, Julia, what's your sense of the level of contact in the last couple of weeks between the White House and the Justice Department. There was some reporting yesterday that the White House has been briefed, in fact, by the Justice Department about what's inside the Mueller report, and perhaps that's why President Trump has been out there so aggressively pushing back on things that we haven't seen yet. What's your sense of the level of contact there? Yeah, I saw that reporting, and, and I, I think it's it's interesting. I mean, the idea that they have been briefed, especially when you've heard from White House lawyers who have said, well, we're preparing this counter report, and we'll release parts of it depending on what we actually see released to the public. So I don't know if they are being cute with that when they actually mm. know exactly what will be released to the public, or if they are in some kind of darkness about what might be redacted. But it's clear that there are people in the White House who are nervous, and they've had a reason to be. And it's because they've been briefed, and that's another thing that the attorney general dodged last week in his questions of, of the level of contact between his mm -hmm. Justice Department and the White House over what's in this report. Well, to Willie's question and to your point, Julia, on the level of contact uh, between the White House and the Justice Department, this might even, I, I don't know, it's some sort of malpractice, um, but to give you a sense of the level of contact, here's the president announcing the press conference. <laughs> You'll see a lot of uh, very 
strong things come out tomorrow. Attorney General Barr is going to be giving a press conference. Uh, I, maybe I'll do one after that. We'll see. But uh, he's done. He's been a fantastic attorney general. He's grabbed it by the horn. Yeah. Level well, of contact. There's contact. So, Way so, too much so contact. He said that they've got he's grabbed. By the horn. This is something that Donald Trump actually has been talking about yeah. since he first got in the White House. One of his great frustrations that he can't control the Justice Department, that Sorry. it's his Justice Department. He should be able to do whatever he wants to do with it. And he said, well, I could, but I won't. And we saw that back and forth. We saw the battering of the Justice uh, Department. And they finally have. Again, with Robert Barr, a guy who is, is, is playing the role of his personal attorney. The New York Times reporting, we flashed it up on the screen, that actually they are preparing, Trump lawyers are inside the White House, preparing their pre uh, uh based upon what Barr has That's told right. them, right. based upon, you know, it's the, uh, copies of these. So, so uh, the question is, uh, we've seen the Democratic press conferences. You, you, you right. almost sense that... Everybody's just Poor playing Democrats. right in to <laughs> Trump's hands. They're, right. they're, they, they, you know, get whipped into a frenzy, and then it comes out, and then we. So let's move beyond this. So yes, the Attorney General Barr has proven once again that he's unfit mm -hmm. to be Attorney General of the United States of America. Fine, full stop. Let's put a period of that. Move that to the side. What happens next? What happens? The Democrats get it. What should we expect to see tomorrow? and the next day and the next week because chances are good this is going to start an entirely new process in the united states house of representatives yeah, I, the, the interesting thing let, let's talk about that little thing called timing we are beginning the easter weekend which leads to an easter week for the united states congress mm -hmm. there are no members of congress in washington right now right they will not be there for 10 days which by the way you, we should explain that is what politicians do they'll drop something exactly. around the fourth of july they'll drop something right. around easter but you don't drop this on a holiday weekend particularly when you know on monday uh, members of Congress are not going to be there. So for the Democrats, they have the, they're in the disadvantage of, of sitting there waiting in a space where they have this thing that's out there, but they're not here in town real time to address it. So it'll be interesting to see Nancy Pelosi's in Europe uh, or traveling right now. You've got other Democratic leaders who are back in their districts. So it'll be interesting to see if there's some level of coordination next week that you hear response uh, to some degree from where they are, wherever right. they happen to be. That's part one. Part two is going to be what happens when they get back, when they are back in the room mm. with the, the rest of the folks here in Washington, in, in Washington, and how they then respond. They've got the window to sort of set that messaging up, but here's the problem. Trump will have already mm. predefined this space over the next 10 days um, and that's going to be the real difficult part for Democrats to step in that when they're not here to coordinate message and to sort of put that message out on the street we'll see if Nancy's able to do that from where she is and have her, her communications operations uh, in play to do that but it matters the timing on this thing matters Joe as you know right as a former member when you're gone Pretty much everything stops, um, and and you know, short of you know a world war situation, uh, those members are back in their districts, and to pull them from that and to focus on a big national story can be challenging. Well, and Willie, really, they need. I mean, what they're going to need to do is they're just they're going to need to at least have enough people staying in town to drive that message. You have to own the weekend. You need to yeah, get the report. Let them own Thursday and Friday because yeah. people aren't paying attention. Democrats need to own Saturday and Sunday. Sunday shows. They need to hold press conferences. They have to prepare and get the big Easter morning headlines by what they reveal on Saturday, which actually will, will hurt Donald Trump. And then they need to own the Sunday shows, which will dominate the next week. So somebody needs to stay in town. And they need to make sure that there is an explosion of news on Saturday that completely dominates the cycle Sunday and leading into next week. I expect some of the Democrats will do that. And you're absolutely right that this is not the end of something. It's the beginning of something else. The House Judiciary Committee has already authorized a for the full report. They'll probably issue that subpoena under Jerry Nadler. You have House and Senate investigations into all these questions that the special counsel was looking into. Barr himself is going to testify before the Judiciary Committees in the Senate and the House. This is going to go 